Welcome back inside the Now Morning Show, ladies and gentlemen. It's just about two minutes before seven o'clock. I hope that you had your breakfast and you're ready for a nice conversation with the Honourable Faris Alwari, the Minister of Rural Development and Local Government. He joins us this morning to chat about National Cleanup and Rainy Season Preparedness Campaign. It's called We Clean TNT. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you. Lovely conversation this morning about the joys of getting back to school. Uh, congratulations to all parents and Prayers for our little ones who are with a little bit of anxiety and social reintegration. No time like the present. So pleased to be with you this morning and pleased to talk a little bit about preparedness for local government reform. It's much more than just clean up. Uh, we are on a survey exercise as well. I don't know if you know, but rural development and local government manages 80% of the road networks in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. It's a ministry that comprises somewhere close to 30,000 employees, multi-billion dollar ministry. And for far too long, we've been talking, talking, talking local government reform. We've been looking at Tobago every time we go and saying, wow, this place looks well managed. And we talked to the chief secretary and other secretaries. And then in Trinidad and Tobago, we don't realize that we can do exactly that. So beginning this Saturday, we're on a national cleanup and survey campaign. We're starting in Diego Martin. Let me just put some of these pieces together for you. We have um, plastics and bottles in our dreams. And I can tell you that we have already developed our beverage recycling and bottle recycling legislation. Part of this campaign involves making sure that we move those things out of our streets, rivers, trains, communities, and get them into recycling centers. So having some of the surveying aspects into how that works is critical. Ensuring that river embankments, road slopes are in proper condition is tied in to our work when we do the road repair company. So we have a secondary road repair company, which has been capitalized. That is now under the hand of this particular ministry. And that is intended for us to deal with the road conditions. Many people on their way to school this morning would have been feeling the road for every inch and bump, and the quality of lives in that commute matters, and therefore road stabilization, techniques to get those things moving. These are big parts of what we do. We take it for granted that these things ought to go on, but I can tell you the last time that there was a survey to bring things which are in need of being invested in a corporation, was 22 years ago. What do I mean by that? A corporation can't manage something that it doesn't own. It doesn't own it unless it is put into law. It must be vested. So that way we deal with this whole concept of what is orphan or what is not. So right. please, we're asking everyone in Diego Martin to bring your white waste out, bring your large bulk items out, your tree cuttings out. We'll be descending upon Diego Martin in every area, Saturday and Sunday. And we're looking forward to cooperation just means bringing it out and we'll do the rest. All right. So, Minister, the, this first part is just a survey you're saying or you're actually starting to collect things one time? It's both. While we're collecting, we're surveying. So we're collecting all of the refuse, bulk items, tree cuttings, garbage, structures, tires. Last time we collected literally thousands of truckloads. So we're picking up all things in our areas. We're coming towards the rainy season on June 5th, but while we're doing all of that collection, beginning in Diego Martin, we're also surveying because we have significant works to get done. Road repair, slope stabilization, drainage stabilization. So we're using it as an opportunity to map at the same time while we pick up and clean. Right. Tell me a little bit more about, about slope stabilization, because does that mean you're going to be able to help people who live on hills, who have houses, or is it only on public major roads? So the public major roads belong to the Ministry of Works and Transport. That's about 20% of our road network. Everything else belongs to the Ministry of Rural Development and local government. That's 80% of our road networks. The slope stabilization that we're looking at is where land slippages come into the roadways. Where those land slippages exist, obviously there'll be houses and other things associated behind that. Private property is not government property. 
but repairing things which have caused jeopardy to private property obviously has an effect. And we're talking about implementing with the Ministry of Agriculture, with the Ministry of Works and Transport, things like ensuring that the road doesn't find itself blocked by the land slippages that come ahead. You see land collapse onto roadways, you see drainage therefore clogged, and therefore people's homes get flooded, etc. We don't really realize how large this is mm -hmm. until the rains come down and everybody says we coulda, shoulda, woulda, but in fact we didn't. So this is our opportunity to get that rhythm right, identify areas that require critical assistance and get into those communities and areas. Do, we, do you think you'll have enough time before the rainy season of 2022? I think that we will not have enough time to complete all before 2022, but that's not the mission. Right. The mission is to be on a continuous ongoing arrangement. Remember, this is part of the local government reform, which is intended to move the equation a little bit further. People ask themselves, well, why am I seeing this overgrown lot here? Or why am I seeing garbage collection not moving the way it ought to happen? A lot of that has to do with manpower planning. We have more than enough manpower. We have more than enough assets, but ensuring that we can tag where the assets are, human assets and physical assets, and have them at work is going to be a little bit easier when people in Trinidad and Tobago have the advantage of using our app. We're about to launch. We've developed it already. We're in beta testing an, an app, which is called Local. And in this app, you're able from your home to drop a pin to a WhatsApp feature or a geotag onto the app and say, look, there is a leak here. There is a road repair required here. There's an abandoned lot here. There's a derelict vehicle here. These are the things that we're pushing to ensure that we get structured approach. And therefore, people need to have a little bit better ease of doing business. That's tied in with our electronic payment program so that the services that you require, whatever they may be, if it's your town and country planning at the corporation, if it's your building inspector, if it's your public health, if you wanna throw a FET and you have a license to pay for, these are some of the things that we can bring into online services and therefore online payments, making ease of doing business all the much better. And, and how soon do we expect this app to be out of beta testing and ready for the public to use freely? We're going to fully beta test it in the month of May. And at the end of May, we intend to have the full launch. In the meanwhile, one of the tasks that I've been assigned is digitization of the ministry. The ministry is not just a ministry. It's the ministry. It involves 14 municipal corporations. It has the rural development company. It has the CPEP company. It now has the secondary roads repair company and we have 1,500 municipal police. So it is actually a very, very, very large ministry. The key is ensuring that people have an awareness of what this ministry ought to be doing in their lives, because this thing touches where you leave your refuse, where you pull up to go home, what you step over on the roadway. It starts from the minute you wake up to the moment you go to bed, where there are a lot of hidden services, a lot of people behind the scenes that you don't see at work. So this is about understanding how do we access these services? We know 75% of our budget is spent upon human resources. Are we seeing the human resources at work in the best efficient way possible? A lot of that is brought together by digitization and access to information. Because in this testing of the app, we don't only want people to report problems, they need to have feedback. So there's a back room. We ensure the services are coordinated. We identify to WASA what WASA needs to be done, swim call what swim call needs to do, and we put and package those services together so that when you press click, that something is happening and you can track what is happening. To do that, obviously, the beta testing goes on in the month of May, and then we roll it out in large form. 
Now, Minister, you've been fairly recently assigned this post and this ministry, and uh, you seem to be hitting the ground running. Uh, have you been able to assess what the challenges that this particular ministry have faced over the few over the years have been? Because I know that, especially in Diego Martin, they've done they've done the dredging of the drains so that we try to minimize the, the amount of flooding that happens. Maybe not as much as of the refuse pickup as as you're talking about, particularly this morning. But what are some of the major challenges that this ministry has faced? One of the major challenges is really the coordination of structures. What do I mean by that? We know we have daily paid, monthly paid, and other paid workers working in the Diego Martin Corporation. We know we have CPEP at work doing work at the same time. But are we satisfied, for instance, that we're seeing the best cleanliness levels in Diego Martin, as an example, or San Fernando, as an example? And most people would answer that quite quickly by saying no. And that really ties itself into where are my resources? How are they operating? We have 1,500 municipal police in, in, the, in the established number. We're at 776 right now. We're, in, we're bringing in the rest. We have litter wardens, et cetera. But if you ask the average person if they feel the impact, the answer is going to be no. And the reason is we don't have the coordinated rollout of services because it's all paper-based. In speaking with the municipal police, for example, and making sure that we treat with gender-based violence, domestic violence, would you believe 150 murders each year of, let's say, 500 murders, 150 murders are carried out by people who know each other. Half of that 150 is domestic violence alone. With the introduction of gender-based violence unit as the TTPS, that number was able to be cut in half, literally, by early intervention. Now, take your community police, the municipal police, deploy them so you know where your assets are by simply having a phone with an app that says I'm on duty and at X location and resources can be ruled out faster. So coordination of services is the critical aspect to efficiency. And you can't be efficient on something that you can't measure. You can't measure something you've not surveyed. So when we say, Diego Martin. Well, what is Diego Martin? Which roads belong to the corporation? Which roads belong to the Ministry of Works and Transport? Which area is to be cleaned? Is it vested? Is it not? Can the services be applied? It's only when we deal with it that way, by digitizing and putting the existing resources into work in a different way, that we're going to see some changes. Very much like the changes that I had the pleasure of driving in the other portfolio that I managed, where we took digital services and literally applied it across the board. We no longer move prisoners. We save $26 million a year in not moving prisoners. All access to Registrar General Services are online. You go to court on a laptop. These things didn't happen by mistake. It took a government, it took a minister in that position to apply those services to make it work differently and this is my job in the ministry that I sit in now. Now, Minister, I understand the intention and I, I applaud the intention. I don't think that we always get the, the delivery of it to the way that it, it's meant to be. Because I've, I've spoken to, to other ministers before and I've said, you know, while your job is to put policy in place to implement these things, oftentimes we have a challenge when it comes to execution, when it comes to implementation. So even in the example you just gave, I had an experience just last week where I went to the Ministry of Legal Affairs to be able to, and they told me I had to make an appointment online, but I made an appointment online and I said I had to go and stand up in a line to wait to go and do the paperwork, to then go and pay money to come back in seven days. So to me, it's not efficient use of the digitization so, platform. So, 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 so let me interrupt for a moment, because there are two other stages to happen. So seven years ago when I entered that ministry, everything was on paper. Seven years later, at least it's all available in electronic format because we digitized millions and millions and millions of records. The next stage that comes is where we turn off the paper, and that's a matter of weeks away. So in your company's registry experience in taking the steps forward, it isn't as if we didn't know what you're saying happens. We had to first digitize the millions of records, get the systems and structures in place. And I can tell you that I left the draft legislation at the AG's office. You will no longer need to physically drop in any paper at all 
And that's a matter of, a, of a, at best, a couple of months away from now, where you will literally be filing everything online the same way we do it in court. Now, I take that, that, I, take I do that want into to... local government. Yeah, and, and that's, I, I what, do that's want what the to... mission is. I do want to translate that into, into what you're saying regarding local government and rural development as well, because I'm curious as to, is there any, uh, any emphasis being placed on tr retraining staff to be able to deal with the new digitized world that we'll be entering? Yes, a, a lot of the retraining comes about in accountability, because when, when the systems are applied, the systems will look like this. Faris Arawi is a government ministry. Faris Arawi's job is to do one, two, three, four, on the structured system, we take all of the information in relation to the work that Faris Arawi is supposed to do, and we can actually track what is red light, what is stuck and what's not happening, what is yellow light, what is waiting on an input from somewhere else, and what is green light, what is processing. So a lot of the structures are not so much, can I use technology? It's really, am I being put into a system where I'm accountable for the work that I'm doing? and where that work can be done in flexi-time arrangements or in structured arrangements, because access to your digital environment, much like we were talking about schools this morning, access to your digital environment means you get to work differently. So the answer to your question simply is yes, there's training, but a lot of it is not rocket science. A lot of it is really accountability. Are we getting a full day's work with honest pay for an honest job performed. And that's the key. And that's a challenge we've been facing in the public sector for quite some time. I've heard lots of people complain about it, but I look forward to seeing it uh, grow and be implemented effectively. Can uh, I say this? If we uh, don't dare to dream, and if we don't have hope, and if we don't remember that we just have to start, things mm -hmm. never get done. Agreed. Why I speak with such confidence on the, on the structures that I'm suggesting to you now is that I had seven years to do it in a different environment and it's all working with next steps to happen. There was a time, I just, I will say this by way of analogy. We're going to be debating the cannabis control bill on Wednesday in the House of Representatives. That's the lawful development of cannabis as an industry. And when I reveal the figures on what the decriminalization of marijuana did, you'd be shocked to know that having the courage to have decriminalized marijuana could have the effect that we had, much like motor vehicle and road traffic. We decriminalized and we put demerit points into the system. We got rid of 104,000 cases per year in the court system, but we also ended up with a 65-year low in road traffic deaths. So put that into local government. Apply that to say, well, where are the CPEP in relation to municipal corporation workers? Are they being integrated in the right way? Are they at work for the number of hours that they're supposed to be in? Because we're paying the salaries and wages and there are very many hardworking people. If you ever go down to the Port of Spain City Corporation salvaging area and you see our people at work at 2 a.m. in the morning with hidden services, our garbage doesn't move by mistake, and it is a multi-million dollar business. Add recycling onto that. Dream about an industry where glass has value, plastic has value, tires have value, and now you're talking multiple layers of entrepreneurship. Who moves it? Who recycles it? What comes out of it? All of that is now part of local government. The key is to understand how large the opportunity is for reform if we just pay attention to the plant and machinery, the people and the processes that are involved. Nice. Well, uh, before we go, Minister, can you just remind people how they can be a part of the cleanup activities for this weekend coming in Diego Martin? How can they send their stuff to be picked up or where can they put it? Just outside on the road? Sure. So, so powered, powered by local government, Diego Martin, be ready Saturday and Sunday all of your white waste, your fridges, your stoves, your microwaves, um, your car tires, your grass cuttings, your tree cuttings, your bags, things that you needed to get out and about, put them out into your normal um, drop-off areas. We will be collecting them from in front of your gates. We will have CPEP and corporation workers at work 
in grass cutting, in removal. We're taking all of the green waste and we're putting it into a recycling compost area at Piaco. We'll be swim call, we'll have a, a particular truck on standby for us to collect the tires, etc. Um, we are intent on arriving at your gates, at your homes, and over two days to move as we survey the state and condition of where we are, and we plan for local government operations in this new way that I've been describing this morning. In, the, in that journey, we're coming to collect in a national cleanup campaign all that you have that you need us to move. So please don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss the backhoe. Don't miss the truck. Have it ready Saturday morning, Sunday morning, throughout the day, and we will be on circuit with you. We'll have more in the newspapers, more on the radios, and we're doing this beginning in Diego Martin, and then we go across all of the regional corporations in Trinidad and, uh, as we roll it across. Thank you so much, Minister, for joining us this morning and sharing with us, and all the best for this weekend and going forward. Thank you so much. Have a great week, and to our kids, hope you had a good day this morning. Parents, hope you're not too frazzled. God <laughs> bless us all. Take care. That's the Honorable Faris Alwari, the Minister of Rural Development and Local Government, sharing with us what the ministry is up to. And this weekend, Diego Martin, your first stop, you get a chance to get rid of some waste that you've been holding on to that you don't know how to get rid of. This weekend is your chance. We take a quick break and come back with more on the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.